Come on, big one on the wire. Come on. G'day, welcome back to Kiwi Farmer. So here we're in the uh, grass paddock with Fodderbeet next door. And these are the heifers, the newly weaned heifers that we've uh, we weaned in one of the other videos. So this video is going to be about winter grazing and uh, setting up for winter grazing. So at the moment we're at the process of uh, setting the, all the brakes up for put everything behind wires. So ewes and, and calves. Um, yeah, so we'll go through those equations and show you how we, we set it all up. So yeah, these skills just broke out. Last night we had a thunderstorm. And um, yeah, if you know anything about calves and thunderstorms, they don't really like <laughs> each other. So yeah, they broke out. Uh, so I just got them back, tied the wire back up. We'll chuck the power back on and these girls can go back onto their fodder beat. So we're up here uh, where we just did this, one of the existing uh, new fence lines. Split this paddock up into 10 hectare blocks. So what we're doing now is I'm going to run a temporary fence through, oh, just wherever I can, but down through the saddle, up the other side, to way over on the skyline just in there. And the purpose of that is to split this up into about five hectares and these 100 cows, and this beef cows we've got over there, uh, they can tidy all this rough stuff up. So all this roughage that's there, um, and all the stuff behind me, as you can see, yeah, we'll tidy all that up and then it'll be good for um, for carving, uh, for lambing, sorry, for ewes to come up here and lamb. So they'll be on this side first and then we'll pull the fence down because the water's in the creek until we get our water supply done up here. Um, and then and then they'll go into this block and chew out that as well. So I shot down to the hut and grabbed uh, the hut that we got over the back there and grabbed a couple of standards that we had in there for horse riders to set up a pen. So we've got all this side sorted out. So here's the fence from the other end. Runs down the scut up and over through the saddle there. Um, yeah, so at least it's nice easy country where all the cattle come and sit, camp, um, fenced off. So then they can, yeah, chew out all this stuff. Plenty of tucker here and we need to get it sprayed out. Uh, sorry, chewed out, so then we can go through and spot spray all the gorse and stuff. And then the ewes will have an easier time keeping control of that gorse. So we'll go let the cows in here and uh, they can just wander through over the next day or so. So the old cows have done their dash in here. They've chewed it out enough. Yeah. And then we might run the ewes through here just after the rams have come out. But yep, yeah, we'll uh, yeah, they've chewed it out enough. So now that the we'll get a bit of growth before we lamb in about the third week in September up here. So yeah, beautiful day here at the moment. Take this off. We don't need this. Put it there. We can go on the other side. The old Ranger, Polaris Ranger, I think it's like a 2007, six. He's um, getting a bit worn out. So what are, what are other people running in the way of side-by-sides? Um, it's good for us to have a side-by-side. -side. It means we can take the kids on the road and be legal and um, yeah, take the whole family around in it. So I really want a three-seater. Probably looking at this stage at a Can-Am just because it was the motorbike we've got and the Can-Am dealership in Rangira, which is our local one here, are really good. Um, but yeah, chuck in the comments what uh, what you guys run and what you suggest. So we've only got 0.6 uh, volts coming up the hill up here. But when you have these little insulators and the pins pull out and the electric wire goes up and starts, yeah, there's another one there. Um, certainly doesn't help the power <laughs> coming up the hill. So we'll jam that back in without getting a shock. Go for 
I wander down the hill, see what others we can find. I think it only takes one wire off, touching a um, touching a wire tower, to then turn all your hill country into virtually no no electric at all. So we'll um, just go along here and uh, see if we can rectify it. So we've found our issue. <laughs> this is a fence line that um, we were going to spray last year, but just never got around to it. So it's. Um, yeah, it's a bit overgrown, but we're losing 40 odd amps. Just the insulators come off that Waratah there. So we'll, uh, yeah, we'll get it back together. Without getting a shock, I hate shocks. Right, we'll show you the difference. So now we've got, what have we got? Seven amps, 3,600 volts going up. Up the farm, so yeah, I'll call that a success. Now we just got to walk hey, back to the top, up there. That's all right, at least it's a lovely day. Oh, made it. So I'll just shut this gate. These are some cow ewes that I've got to take down sometime and uh, I'll just go to auction. But shut this gate for now, we'll go test the fence down the bottom. Oh, but at least I can drive. So down here with the uh, hill ewes, we've just got them down on the flats, finishing off their mating behind a wire. So shifted this this morning, so they've chewed all this out today and gave them a hay bale, so they're looking pretty good. But uh, what I want to do here is use my rising plate meter. So if you guys haven't seen one of these, it's... Um, Essentially all it does is measure the height So like that's our height there and we'll try and hold it So that's the distance there between uh, the bottom of the the bottom of the ground So this little bottom part and the top of the grass So which is that so that's the density and then in, in the brains you've got the calculations that do the turn the, the height or the density into uh, kilos of dry matter per hectare um, so we'll show you what happens and then I can go home and um, put it all in the computer and we'll show you how we work out break distance stuff for these girls. So we'll get a start here. So all we do is walk along like this, press that into the ground, wait for it to stop, you pull it up and So we do the beeps down and up about 30 times, but it'll tell me when we're close to 30. At the moment we're reading 4,378, so there's a lot of grass in here, and then this is tall fescue, so it seems to be a lot more dry matter um, than the calculation that this is set up for, probably ryegrass. So there we go, it just beeped, um, didn't double beep, so that's... 30 steps across the paddock. So there we go, we've come from the ute over there to here. And yep, so now we can go back and put uh, 4350 into the computer. Inside now, and we've got our Excel spreadsheet pulled up here. So just going to explain it to Gina as well because she's doing a bit of work with the milking sheep. Um, so at the top here, oh, can you hold that for me? Mm hmm. We'll control and scroll in. Did you know you could do that? <laughs> oh, hold up, not too much at once. <laughs> so mob name, these are the hill ewes that are across the road that you guys saw us just um, plate meter. So there's 395 in that mob. Oh, what have I done? At the moment, they're getting 1.8 kilos of grass per head per day, so per animal per day. And so a total demand of 711 kilos of dry matter per day. Um, they're not getting any baleage. We're not really counting the hay that's in there just because they can pick away at that when they've got a bit of a, uh, they feel like they need some roughage. So from, we go down here, um, 
and they would require 11, uh, yeah, 711 kilos of dry matter from grass. So we come over to this side. So that's the that's the demand side. This is the um, availability or the pasture side. So what's available? So we plate metered. We plate metered 4,250 kilos of dry matter per hectare. Um, and now this is post grazing pasture mass. So this is what is left after they've eaten. So if they're eaten down to you know an inch, um, yeah, that's 1,200 kilos. That's what's going to be left. We don't want to push them too hard. So 4250 minus 1200 is 3050 kilos of available dry matter per hectare. So then we come down here and out of that amount that you're offering them, um, they're only going to utilize say 90%. Um, Where do you get that? From? Well that's, that's just a figure that I've kind of come up with. Um, for grass? For grass, yeah. So say if it was really muddy, if we had two inches of rain and it would all just turn to mud and slush, that might drop down to 50. Um, so the utilisation is how much of the feed that they can actually consume, not that what's left yeah. over. Correct, that's correct. So say in a crop situation, if you're feeding kale, something really tall, they might only utilise, say, 75% of that because there's stalk that they're not going to eat, there is leaf that they're going to drop on the ground and then trample, um, yeah, so that can easily be changed. Oh, what I should have mentioned is in this sheet, all the yellow are ones you change, all the white are the results of the formula. That can easily be changed when you have a difference of days or seasons or um, climate. Yeah. So as a result of that, we need 2,590 metres squared. So then that number, this is kind of the, the crux of it, so that number there is a derivative of how much grass they require. So C10, that cell there, divided by the availability, G5, and then I've just times the availability by the utilization um, to get to get that number, and then yeah, we times that by 10,000 to get meters per squared, ah, meters squared. Okay, so that's the formula up there. That's the formula up there. Bloody looking thing up there, yep. lots of numbers. Um, so yeah, the result of that is 2,590 meters squared, and then our break width is 184 meters. So what I do is while I'm on the computer here, you go to track map. If you have it. <laughs> wow, this is, our sprayer uses this, so we can just come into this, we log all our jobs um, for spraying through track map for Glen Tui contracting, so we can easily just come onto here and use this. But it's great for yeah, measuring paddocks, just sitting in the comfort of your own home. So this is our paddock here, and you just click on one side, click on the other, it measures the distance across. So this says 184 meters. And we can do that with all, all the paddocks on the farm. Um, use this for water pipes and fence lines and everything, so it's quite handy. So we put 184 meters in here, and it calculates it out to 14 meters as a break size. So um, yeah, it's pretty easy. And then we've got one for the early use down at the lease block. I've just got to shoot down and plate meter that paddock. And then we've got one for the beef calves. So this is their grass allocation. So they're getting three kilos a head per day of grass and 4.5 kilos a head per day off fodder beet. Um, so that's grass and beet. That's beet. So down here we've got four meters of grass is what they're getting as a break size. Completely different break size to the um, sheep up there. Right, because there's, there's yeah. only 27 animals, but mm. they're eating more. Yeah. Mm. Um, four meters of grass, and over here we get one meter of fodder beet at a 10 ton crop. Um, yeah, leaving leaving a ton behind um, right. at, a, at a utilization of 90 percent because um, oh the utilization because it's in the well mud. They're, they're leaving a ton behind so so in uh, the mud yeah in the mud but also the amount of um, the they they will eat the bulb down to ground level but then there'll still be some bulb left in the ground yeah so that's that's that and then. Some that they'll just roll around in the mud and they won't eat, so that's where the 90% comes in. But you can easily change those values, the 90% and the um, 
yeah, so the utilization, you can easily change them, which is quite good. So Excel, that's how I do my uh, break calculations. And uh, for winter, for winter, and then you just write those down in your notebook or put them on your phone and uh, yeah, alter them as you see fit. So, this is a good rough guide to start with, and then as you do your breaks and your paddocks, so you'll do one, one, do one t today, and then you'll come back tomorrow and go, Oh, actually, they've chewed it right down probably further than I want, so you can adjust the um post-grazing pasture mass where you can adjust the intakes that they need or the amount of cover there so there's lots of adjustment in these and you can just kind of um, tweak them to get right on the money so yeah um, I find Excel pretty good for this kind of stuff right got all that computer work done um, that'll do it for this video for today but we'll come back with you tomorrow we'll head down to the lease block plate meter that down there and then uh, come back poke that information in the computer and uh, yeah come up with a result for break size down there and uh, yeah so feed the dogs and uh, go inside where it's warm